Hi children, in the previous video, so we have studied about what is mean by nutrition, what are nutrients and uh, what is di human digestive system, wh what it comprises of. We have studied about the elementary canal and the different parts in the elementary canal children. In this video, so we are going to study about the digestive glands and the mechanism of what children digestion in human beings isn't it so we have already studied children that so carbohydrates proteins as well as fats they are the complex substances children so these complex substances they need to what converted into a simple substances children isn't it so that is called as what children digestion isn't it so digestion is nothing but what children digestion is nothing but what conversion conversion of complex food materials or complex food into simple food into simple food materials children isn't it so here how these complex substances or how this complex food will become into a convert into a simple food children by the action of digestion digestive enzymes children isn't it so is it enough children that converting uh, conversion of complex food into a simple food substances that's enough in the human digestive system no so these simple food food should utilize and assimilate in our body children isn't it so we are going to see those all steps which include in the process of digestion children isn't it so here so digestion is nothing but what children conversion of complex food into a simple food utilization of those simple food children and assimilation of the food materials children isn't it so we have studied already the parts uh, in this elementary canal children in man elementary canal begins with what children mouth and ends with what children anus isn't it so because of the action of digestive enzymes children the food which is complex so it will convert into a simple substances isn't it so we are going to study today about this digestive glands children isn't it so here first part in this elementary canal this is mouth children as we have already studied in the previous uh, what video that mouth is a slit like opening children which is bounded by a upper lips as well as lower lips and this mouth opens into a cavity we call it as what children buccal cavity see this one this is buccal cavity so buccal cavity or we can also call as oral cavity also oral cavity right and here inside this buccal cavity we see a two structures one is tongue as another one is teeth right children so this is tongue this is tongue and inside the buccal cavity children okay so we see a salivary glands right so this salivary glands children so we are studying about the digestive glands in that children the first thing we are going to study about salivary glands so these salivary glands salivary glands so here so these there are three pairs of salivary glands children so this is a salivary glands salivary glands children okay so this salivary glands are exocrine in nature isn't it so exocrine means what children actually glands are the special organs which are present in our body they secrete they secrete a certain substances children of what function of peculiar function children isn't it so glands are of actually two types so we see uh, what children so let me write it here so glands are of two types one is what exocrine glands and endocrine glands endocrine glands so exocrine glands means what children so this exocrine glands are also called as duct duct glands duct glands 
and these endocrine glands they are called as ductless glands ductless glands children i hope you are able to see now yeah so here this exocrine gland secrete enzymes they secrete what children enzymes whereas this endocrine gland secrete hormones okay so glands are of what children two types in our body so glands uh, two types of glands are seen so exocrine glands exocrine glands are what children duct glands isn't it so this ducts uh, i mean this exocrine glands secrete what enzymes okay and endocrine glands are called has ductless glands children the secretion of this endocrine glands are called has hormones okay we are going to study about this endocrine system in chemical coordination chapter children isn't it so here exocrine glands we are going to study about this exocrine glands because exocrine glands secrete what children enzymes okay so this digestive enzymes it secretes what digestive enzymes so here salivary glands children are also exocrine in function they are exocrine in function isn't it so as we were talking about the salivary glands children there are three pairs of salivary glands okay the first one is submaxillary submaxillary okay and the second one is what children second one is sublingual and third one is parotid parotid glands so there are three pairs of salivary glands seen in the buccal cavity children first one is submaxillary we can also call as submandibular we can also call as sub mandibular gland so this submaxillary gland which is seen just below or just side of the lower jaw isn't it children so side of lower jaw it is seen at the side of lower jaw children its location is just near the uh, what lower jaw side of the lower jaw but where has this sublingual gland children which is seen under the tongue isn't it so just it is seen just under the tongue under tongue then what about this third one parotid gland children this is third one so what about this parotid gland so this is seen just near ear right so here salivary glands are a three pairs children so what first one is submaxillary or we can also call it as submandibular so which is located just side of the lower jaw children and the second one is sublingual okay it is under the tongue and third one is what parotid gland children it is it is seen near the ear so what does this salivary gland secretes so salivary gland secretes children so it secretes saliva it it is secretes what saliva so what does this saliva consist so this saliva consist of what children uh, an enzyme called has ptylin okay so commonly we call it has what children ptylin or uh, another name of this ptylin is uh, salivary amylase salivary amylase i wanted to tell you one thing children if a s e a s is in the uh, what up suffix children then it is an enzyme amylase this is what children so by this only we can understand if in the suffix a s e is seen then it is an enzyme got it so salivary amylase or commonly we call it as what children ptylin so this what is the action of this ptylin so it is secreted in the what children secreted by the salivary gland and it is seen in the saliva children it will digest okay it will digest the carbohydrates 
it will digest carbohydrates and converts into converts carbohydrates into maltose sugars maltose sugars and this is maltose sugars is disaccharide children disaccharide saccharide means what sugar disaccharide means what two sugar that means what a sugar with what children two molecules right so it is not a simple one it is it consists of what two molecules of what sugar got it so and this maltose sugar again it has to convert into a simple that is what children glucose in the previous video we have seen already that carbohydrates are complex they need to convert into a simple one that is what glucose but here in the buccal cavity children because of action of this sterling uh, enzyme carbohydrates are converted into a disaccharide that is what maltose sugar children so further it needs what children digestion okay till it gets till it uh, forms into a glucose molecule got it so here actually so you will study this one in the higher classes children what is that so monosaccharide monosaccharide means what only one one sugar that is glucose it is a simple one simple form of what children carbohydrate got it and disaccharides means like a maltose sugars sucrose isn't it sucrose fructose lactose so these are all the disaccharides got it oligosaccharides will be there usually it is a combination of what three to six molecules children and polysaccharides also will be there that is more than six six to more than thousands of what children sugar molecules together that is called as polysaccharides okay so these carbohydrates these starch particles they are polysaccharides so they are very complex so what is what is happening in our what children body in our digestion means so these polysaccharides they need to convert into a simple ones children so that's what happened in the buccal cavity children isn't it so here the carbohydrates are partially got digested so these carbohydrates have converted into a what children maltose sugar that is this is this is disaccharide and this under must what children convert into a simple sugar but this what only happens in the buccal cavity children isn't it and next another thing is also seen in the what children saliva children that is another enzyme called as lysozyme lysozyme enzyme so what is this uh, action uh, what is the function of this lysozyme so this lysozyme children helps it helps it helps to kill microbes which when we take food children so along with the food or along with the water children so there will be certain microorganisms isn't it so they are very harmful got it and that microbes will be killed because of what lysozyme enzyme children so this lysozyme enzyme it is in the saliva children okay so it is seen in the saliva and this saliva it is slightly acidic in nature slightly acidic slightly acidic in nature children around 6.8 ph near about ph of this saliva is 6.8 children got it so here this is about saliva saliva uh, uh, is secreted by salivary glands and uh, its saliva consists of what tylen and tylen will convert the carbohydrates into a disaccharide that is maltose sugar and second one is children lysozyme so it helps in killing the microorganisms which enter through our food children okay and what is the another function so the another function of this what children saliva is so in it helps in mixing the food mastigating isn't it or we can call it as mastigation 
so in our buccal cavity children so when we take the food particles those food particles are split up into what are cut into a small pieces with the help of teeth and tongue children isn't it so these what small pieces of food materials are what children thoroughly mixed with the saliva and which forms into a solid like children a ball like we call it as a bolus got it so that bolus it is pushed it when we swallow it children so it enters into the from the buccal cavity uh, so it reaches to the pharynx pharynx is a common uh, what opening for air as well as what children food we will study about this pharynx in respiratory system children so when we swallow that so through this pharynx the bolus enters into the esophagus it enters into the what children esophagus and in this esophagus there is no digest uh, uh, what digestive enzymes here so why because here the food will not remain in the esophagus so when uh, the food enters into the es esophagus children so what happens is due to the peristaltic uh, what movements a wave like movements children in this because of the contraction of what uh, uh, this esophagus when the bolus enters into it children so that wave like motion or wave like movement of food particles we call it as a peristalsis because of this peristalsis movement children so food particles will not remain in the esophagus got it so it enters into the stomach and the inner lining of this what children esophagus consists of mucous membrane and this mucous membrane helps in lubricating this what children food particles easy passage of what bolus into the stomach got it so here the bolus reaches to the stomach children and we yesterday we have seen the different parts of what's uh, what regions in the stomach uh, cardiac and fundic and as well as pyloric stomach children isn't it so here when the food enters into this what stomach so digestive glands i mean gastric glands gets i mean activated the glands gets activated and secretes gastric juice children okay so here when the bolus enters into the foot enters into the stomach okay so we see gastric glands get activated isn't it and secretes gastric juice it secretes what gastric juice isn't it so what does this gastric juice contains so this gastric juice contains children hydrochloric acid concentrated hydrochloric acid got it so you may get a doubt children so in uh, chemistry you might have studied your chemistry teacher might have said that hydrochl uh, hydrochloric acid is a powerful acid so when this acid secretes in the stomach children so will it damage the inner lining of this what a stomach or what no it cannot uh, what children uh, what damage the inner lining of the stomach because the inner lining of the uh, what children this stomach consists of mucus which will not allow to direct contact with the with the acid okay so that's why there will be no rupture in the what lining of stomach children okay and uh, another what children um, enzyme is produced by the uh, gastric glands children so gastric juice contains hydrochloric acid and as well as <coughs> sorry children hydrochloric acid as well as pepsinogen pepsinogen so this pepsinogen we can also call as propepsin propepsin and there is an another enzyme also children we call it as a renin okay so gastric juice produces a two types of enzymes children that is pepsinogen and renin along with that hydrochloric acid is also produced concentrated hydrochloric is also produced so because of this pro uh, production of this hydrochloric acid children the food which is present in this stomach it becomes acidic in nature so in the stomach children in the stomach what happens the food will be in acidic nature okay 
and uh, because of the presence of this what hydrochloric acid children actually this uh, pepsinogen or propepsin and uh, actually this renin not pro renin so these pro renin as well as a pro uh, pepsin they are inactive children they are inactive secretions of gastric glands or gastric glands so when they get active so they get activated when it mixes with the hydrochloric acid okay so this pepsinogen this pepsinogen with the action of I mean hydrochloric acid it becomes into a pepsin in the same way <coughs> prorenin in the presence of hydrochloric acid children we, we get it renin renin children so how it helps in these two pepsin as well as renin how it helps in the digestion so this pepsin children it acts on proteins and converts into peptones and converts into peptones and what about this renin this renin it is seen in the infants children so this is uh, acts on a milk protein milk protein see when small children uh, would drink milk and sometimes they vomit isn't it so when they vomit uh, the milk will not come instead a coagulation of milk uh, like curdling so we see that so that is due to what children because of the enzyme that is what renin renin is what children milk protein it coagulates and then it converts into a what peptones got it children so here what is the use of this hydrochloric acid hydrochloric hydrochloric acid is converting the inactive pepsinogen and inactive pro, uh, enzyme that is pro renin into what pepsin as well as renin so this pepsin as well as renin are acting on proteins they digest the proteins and converts into what children peptones okay so peptones already we have seen in the previous uh, uh, video children what proteins are the complex substances the simple form of the proteins are what amino acids so one amino acid and another amino acid are combined with the peptide bond children isn't it so these all you will learn in the higher classes okay so this is more than enough children here so inactive pepsinogen will convert into pepsin in the presence of what hydrochloric acid and this pepsin will uh, will digest the proteins into peptones and in, and uh, renin is also seen so renin enzyme is not given in your books children this is an extra knowledge so renin it acts on a milk protein and converts into a peptones so that's what we have see we, we see here children so when the solid food bolus enters into the stomach okay so because of the action of gastric glands i mean gastric juice that is hydrochloric acid and the churning movements in this what children food part i mean churning movements uh, in by the stomach the food becomes very what children liquid semi liquid so we call this as chyme children okay so <coughs> we call this food has a chyme semi liquid children okay so liquid got it so this is in the acidic form so here slightly acidic in the buccal cavity children because of what saliva and here in the gastric uh, uh, in the stomach the chyme is in the what which form acidic form okay so this is what children esophagus we forgot to write this one esophagus and uh, this is what children stomach this is stomach okay so stomach leads to what children a small intestine so small intestine consists of three parts we have studied already so what is that first one the first part is what children duodenum right and the second part is what jejunum and third part is what ileum isn't it so ileum opens into a large intestine so what happens here so here the food got digested or not in the stomach yes 
so proteins got digested here children isn't it so you may get a doubt now so what about an amylase enzyme so once this what amylase enzyme i mean the bolus consists of amylase also no so when it enters into this what stomach it becomes inactive after some time children so there is no digestion of carbohydrates and fats in the stomach there is only digestion of what proteins only isn't it so proteins will converts into a peptones got it and now the food this kind what i said is <coughs> the semi liquid food <coughs> A semi liquid food uh, we are calling it as a chyme with the help of what i mean here there will be a sphincter called as pyloric sphincter pyloric sphincter with the help of this sphincter children a liquid a little amount of what chyme every time enters into the what children small intestine the first part of the small intestine this one is duodenum so you may get a doubt now here so all at once whatever the chyme is seen in this in this what stomach if it enters into the small intestine what happens then the digestion may not uh, what children uh, be effective here only a small amounts of what children here chyme is Uh, what poured into the small intestine that is into the duodenum so the once slowly slowly it will what digest isn't it so what happens in the duodenum got it so in the duodenum children so uh, the pancreat pancreatic juice as well as bile juice opens into the duodenum the first part of the intest small intestine that is what children duodenum so let us see these parts children so this is it is looking like a leaf isn't it so this one is pancreas and this one which is seen just opposite of this what children stomach right side in the abdomen this is one is liver okay so liver is made up of hepatic cells i'll write it here next one is what children liver so liver is made up of hepatic cells so this hepatic cells children hepatic cells produce bile juice and this bile juice is stored in the gall bladder in the gall bladder so through this gall bladder children okay so here let me see this is a gall bladder gall bladder children okay so a duct which arises from this one children so we call this one as a cystic duct cystic duct children so there are several uh, what children mm, ducts children they are called as hepatic ducts hepatic ducts isn't it so these ducts opens into this one cystic duct and collectively commonly we call it as a bile duct okay and even the pancreatic duct this one is pancreatic duct children this is pancreas and this one is pancreatic duct got it so this pancreatic duct as well as bile duct opens into the duodenum isn't it so what are the secretions or what is seen in this bile juice and pancreatic juice first we shall see about the bile juice children isn't it so this bile juice <coughs> bile juice children very important thing bile juice have no digestive enzymes there is no digestive enzymes in this bile juice children so bile juice consists of two things children that is bile pigments and bile salts it consists of what bile pigments as well as bile salts so what is the function of this bile pigments and bile salts so this bile pigments will give a color to the fecal matter to the stool 
and even it gives a color to the urine also children okay so bile pigments are used to give the color and next to this bile salts are used for the emulsification of fats got it so what what is the function of this bile salts they they do not what children digest this one but the emulsification of the uh, fats is seen that means what the complex uh, what fat globules will be split up children isn't it so that is done because of what bile salts children okay emulsification 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 of fats got it very very important children okay what is that bile juice bile juice is secreted by the liver children and this bile juice have no digestive enzymes so it consists of bile pigments and bile salts bile salts help in emulsification of emulsification of emulsification of what fats okay and pancreas is also there now isn't it so this pancreatic uh, what a pancreas also secretes pancreatic juice and this pancreatic juice with the help of pancreatic duct it opens into the uh, what duodenum okay so pancreatic pancreas let us see pancreas children and this pancreas will produces pancreatic juice actually this pancreas is exocrine in function as well as endocrine in function children both so we have already studied in the beginning of the lesson we have studied children isn't it so what is that exocrine gland and endocrine exocrine gland means what duct glands so all the digestive glands <coughs> are exocrine glands and endocrine glands mean ductless glands children so they secrete hormones exocrine glands will secrete enzymes okay all the digestive uh, what enzymes comes under this one only isn't it so here this pancreas children they produce i mean uh, its function is exocrine in function and endocrine in function okay so the endocrine function we will see it in the uh, what coordination chemical coordination lesson children so i wanted to tell uh, one thing here so islets of langerhans children that is the cells in the what uh, pancreas it secretes a hormone called as insulin so this insulin what uh, what is the use of this insulin is insulin will convert the excess of what sugar into glycogen and store in the liver so whenever our body needs what children sugar so this glycogen again converted into a sugar and it used up by the body so the pancreas will secrete what children a hormone called as insulin i am not writing here because we will discuss in the what chemical coordination lesson children isn't it so insulin so if insulin hormone is not secreted in our body what happens what happens children the excess of sugar cannot be uh, converted into the glycogen if it is not converted into the glycogen what happens so this excess of sugar will be eliminated outside of uh, what outside of our body through urine so if excess of what sugar is eliminated from our body what happens so we be uh, we becomes what children fatty cube right so we will be unable to do the work children so there will be a lot of fatigue you children isn't it so that condition we call it as a diabetes that's why diabetes patients what they do so they take an insulin hormone children in a very little quantity and that will help them uh, to convert the excess of sugar in their body into a glycogen and it stored in the liver so these all things we will study in the endocrine system children here but here as we were discussing about the digestive glands digestive glands which are exocrine in function so we will see the exocrine part in the pancreas only <clears throat> so this pancreatic juice children consist of an enzyme children isn't it so we see trypsin okay we see trypsin children and also pancreatic amylase pancreatic amylase 
Are you able to see children? Yeah, yeah, yes. And next one is what children? Lipase. Lipase. What are these one? Isn't it? What are these? So trips, trypsin is an enzyme which is secreted by the pancreas children. It is seen in the pancreatic juice and pancreatic amylase. Already we uh, what children repeat I mean <coughs> amylase is seen in the buccal cavity in the salivary glands children. Isn't it? Pancreas. This is what? So that is salivary amylase and this one is what children pancreatic amylase in the salivary amylase it has what digested the carbohydrates and converted the carbohydrates into maltose sugars so here also pancreatic amylase will convert what else the carbohydrates are remained in the food children it also converts into a disaccharide children isn't it so it converts the carbohydrates into maltose sugar maltose sugar it is a disaccharide and then what about this trypsin children this trypsin will acts on proteins and converts into peptones peptones got it and what about this lipase children so this lipase will show action on fats and converts into what fatty acids fatty acids and glycerol so lipase enzyme so it, it acts on fats and converts into fatty acids and glycerol here so here one thing you need to understand isn't it so we have seen that uh, fats are the complex substances and that must convert into what children simple substance that is fatty acids as well as glycerol the final product that is simple product we got it in the duodenum itself isn't it children because of the pancreatic juice okay and what about these peptones peptones are also what children it is not complete simple children they are just simplified and and these peptones must convert into amino acids and these maltose sugars are also a disaccharide so they need to what still undergo what digestion and convert into a simple sugars okay so there is something uh, there are few other what children um, digestion some other digestion remaining okay so whatever the digested food particles are then see for example that fatty acids are already got children here in the duodenum so it has to be observed so in the small intestine children yesterday we have discussed isn't it the inner line of the small intestine it consists of a what finger like projections and these finger like projections we are calling it as what willy V I double L I willy, isn't it? So this will I or willy, it is uh, helps in increasing the surface of the small intestine. Okay, if the more and more surface is there, the more and more for what food particles they can observe. Got it? So here, these are the finger-like projections. We see that it it is a willy children. And this will I also have a fine head like uh, structures they are called as what children micro will I micro will I or will I children isn't it actually in this what inside this what uh, will uh, will I children uh, blood capillaries are seen children okay so the digested food particles what else are there so it is absorbed or it is absorbed into the blood and through the blood it reaches to the cells so here in the intestine children in the duodenum only the fats are got digested okay and next what about the peptones and maltose sugars so there is in another glands children the in uh, the lining of the intestine consists of glands they are called as intestinal glands okay so intestinal glands so i mean to say here children let us draw it the parts of this one so this is duodenum and the second part of the small intestine it is called as jejunum and third part children we call it as ileum okay ileum and uh, most of the food gets what digested in the ileum only okay so what happens here Yes, I'll write it here. So here, intestinal glands. 
intestinal glands so this intestinal glands children produce intestinal juice intestinal intestinal juice children we call this juice as succus entericus succus entericus okay so succus entericus so this intestinal juice will children we call it as succus entericus it's further digest the what children food particles so what is there to digest it is there to digest the peptones as well as what children are disaccharides children isn't it so let us see that what uh, what does it secrete so it secretes an enzyme children peptidases 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 children it will show action on peptones and converts into amino acids isn't it in the similar way already fats got digested children here what's remaining here only the sugar that is not a simple sugar it is a disaccharide it has to convert into a simple sugar so sim uh, disaccharides are many not only the maltose children so fructose as well as what children a fructose fructose i'll write it here children okay so fructose sucrose maltose these are the disaccharides children isn't it so here fructose fructase enzyme will digest this fructose isn't it and convert into what children glucose and sucrose is an cane sugar children sucrase is an enzyme which will convert this sucrose into a simple sugar that is glucose and maltose is a, what is children it is also a disaccharide so maltase is an enzyme which will digest this maltose into glucose molecules so finally because of what children action of this uh, what enzymes fructase fructase sucrase maltase children so they will convert into what glucose so all the food the food which we have taken children so finally it has converted into a simple substances fats got uh, fats have converted into what children fatty acids and glycerol we have seen in the duodenum and here because of peptidases peptones are converted into amino acids that is the simplest form of the proteins and here this what children are uh, disaccharides such as like fructose sucrose maltose so they also converted into a simple sugar that is what children glucose so all these digested food particles that means simple particles children so will be observed in the what children with the help of villi is the in the small intestine children got it and what happens here so here that food enters into the large intestine so we have seen in the yesterday's uh, what video that large intestine also consists of three parts children first is cecum second is colon and third one is what children rectum okay so here cecum is a vestigial organ children because yesterday we have discussed it consists of what it, it, it uh, does not have any microorganisms in the human being in herbivores animals children so where the herbivores will take the uh, what children grass they eat grass grass consists of cellulose and this cellulose they need to get digested and this digestion is seen with the in the with the help of microorganisms which are present in the cecum so cecum helps in digesting the cellulose but whereas in the human beings children so we don't eat grass so we don't need not to uh, worry about the cellulose children here because we don't take much uh, isn't it so here it is vestigial organ in the human being and when these what children food enters into here i mean undigested food every digested particle will be observed in the what intestine and undigested food particles children such as like roughages children okay so that enters into the large intestine okay so this is what cecum and this one is colon children i'll write it here 
so colon also three this is an ascending colon transverse colon descending colon and this colon opens into rectum and rectum is a sac like structure children so where the fecal matter uh, is temporarily stored okay so and here temporarily stored and it when the urge of what children expelling this fecal matter children it is guarded or it is controlled by the sphincter called as anal sphincter isn't it so here we have an anal sphincter okay so this sphincter will what help uh, uh, what children to expel the what uh, undigested food materials children so undigested food materials will be expelled outside through this anus isn't it so in this way children so mechanism of nutrition is seen in the human beings isn't it so it's very interesting isn't it children so the complex food which you are taking which is in the buccal cavity so what happens you see children it is not a simple process it is a complex process it involves several steps and it involves several enzymes also children isn't it so this is about what the uh, what the action of digestive uh, what enzymes on food and this is about the mechanism of digestion children isn't it so i will in glance in two minutes let us see what we have studied children digestive glands salivary glands children okay it is seen in the buccal cavity three pairs of salivary glands and uh, submaxillary so sublingual parotid glands and this uh, secrete saliva it is slightly acidic and consists of tylen it uh, converts the carbohydrates in maltose sugars and there is another enzyme called has lysozyme it helps to kill the microbes children okay and next come to the food enters into the gastric that is stomach and uh, with the uh, when the food enters into the stomach the gastric glands get activated and they secrete the gastric juice and this gastric juice secretes what children hydrochloric acid and also there are certain enzymes called has uh, uh, propepsin as well as proreneine they are inactive state children so they when they mixes with this when they combines with this what children hydrochloric acid it becomes active form so that is what children pepsin as well as renin they acts on the proteins to convert into a peptones and then next one children next part is a duodenum so pancreatic juice as well as what bile juice enters into the duodenum okay pours into the duodenum and duo this bile juice have no pigments it secretes what children no enzymes but uh, it it consists of bile pigments bile salts bile salts are very important for the emulsification of what children fats and next come to the pancreatic juice which is secreted by pancreas and pancreatic juice consists of uh, three important uh, enzymes trypsin and pancreatic amylase and lipase trypsin acts on proteins and converts into peptones pancreatic amylase converts uh, the carbohydrates into maltose sugar this is what children disaccharide and lipase converts on fats and converts into fatty acids and glycerol and then children intestinal glands and the secretion of this inter intestinal glands is the intestinal juice we call it as succus enterocus children so it produces peptidases which shows action on peptones and converts into amino acid the simple form of proteins and uh, there are certain di uh, saccharides such as like fructose sucrose maltose children okay so and the uh, fructase enzyme acts on fructose and converts into a simple sugar that is glucose sucrase is an enzyme acts on sucrose and converts into a simple sugar that is glucose and maltose i mean maltase enzyme acts on maltose and converts into a simple uh, what form of carbohydrates that is glucose children so in this way children so the food gets digested in the human body children isn't it so this is really quite interesting lesson isn't it children i hope uh, you have really enjoyed this class children if you really enjoyed this class children so please please do subscribe to my channel and also if you feel that it is very needy to you please share it to your friends so that's all for today children thank you thank you very much